Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is an audiobook summary of Creator Hate by Dan Norris. Most of us have a desire to create something, but haven't taken the first step. Hatred stifles our ability to express ourselves and prevents us from creating new things. Hatred can be contained and subdued. Those who succeed are those who create. If we do what we want to do, the world will be a better place. In The War of Art, Stephen Pressfield refers to this as resistance, and it is a similar concept. One can manage and overcome hatred. Accept the presence of hate and recognize it every time it rears its ugly head in order to overcome it. For many of us, making something from scratch has always been a dream, but we never got around to it. It is Dan's belief that the world will be better off if each of us creates the things that we truly desire. He believes that if we create something, we will be more content, more fulfilled, and even more successful. When it comes to success, timing is often overlooked and can be the difference between total failure and massive success. In order to succeed, a person's starting point, friends, and resources all play a role. I can't give you any advice on how to succeed. However, I can assure you that you will not be successful if you do not produce anything. People who are successful create things. Creativity isn't about wild talent as much as it is about productivity, says Stanford School of Engineering professor and author Robert Sutton. It's necessary to try a large number of ideas before finding a few that work. It's just a game of numbers. The ability to be creative does not come naturally to anyone. It's just a person deciding to make something. When your work doesn't go over well with the people around you, don't write yourself off as a failure. As long as you're making something, you're being creative. When you hate, you're unable to come up with new ideas. At the beginning, there was no hatred. Over time, it has grown in strength and now has an arsenal of weapons designed to stifle your creative impulses. Your creative efforts aren't fun for hate, it just is its job. When you choose not to create things, hate wins. It begins with simple, innocent negativity and gradually escalates, according to the theory that, hatred, doesn't happen all of the sudden, it happens gradually. Many people avoid admitting that someone else made something while they themselves did nothing. In the end, haters don't create anything, but rather get caught up in a never-ending cycle of hate feeding hate, and criticism triumphing over creation. When it comes to making excuses, they're basically lies. To stop you from making things, hate's most powerful weapon is to convince you of things that aren't true. You can control, manage, and even defeat hate if you know how. Accepting and recognizing hate's presence is the first step in defeating the hateful force. As the saying goes, listen to the little voice in your head that tells you, in reasonable and measured tones, why you can't do anything. Hatred's excuses for not believing. I'm running out of time. Elite performers don't necessarily spend more time practicing, according to research. It's just more efficient for them when they practice. Become more efficient with your time in order to free up time for making things, he says. Proven methods for maximizing your productivity in a short period of time include single-tasking, smaller projects, tracking your progress, setting goals, doing timed work sessions without interruption, and adding accountability. It's easier to get things done when you have a limited amount of time. It's then that you often get a clearer picture of your priorities. What if I don't succeed? In the end, failure is just course correction. If you can fail quickly and without worry, you can correct course quicker, improve quicker, learn faster and achieve more. In the absence of regular failure, you're not looking for a new place to go. In order to be on par with the world's most intelligent and successful people, you should aim for a failure rate of 97% or better. There is always the fear of failure. You're saying to yourself that you're a loser if you're comparing yourself to someone else. It has been said that comparison is a major killer of creativity. Taking a step back and asking yourself, do I really suck? Is the best way to deal with hate. So, Let's move on with our lives. If you do, we'll be able to help you with that as well. A fourth time, I ought to be doing X. Hate will try to persuade you to do something other than creating. Guilt is one of the ways hate conveys this message. Be more successful by doing more of what you love. It's too difficult, said the fifth person. In addition to overwhelming you, hate uses this technique to prevent you from creating anything. What you need to remember about achieving anything of significance is that the biggest cause of failure is not starting. Once you get going, you'll be fine. 6. It's probably already been done. Hate convinces entrepreneurs that someone else has probably done it before when they come up with new ideas. Being noticed is more of a challenge in business than merely coming up with an innovative idea. 
You'll win if you can garner more attention for your concept than your rivals. Is it a good idea to do things that have already been done? In that case, congratulations. In order to get better, repeat the process. I need your permission. No one has to agree with you. You don't have to ask permission. You're no longer a child. Negativity will not be tolerated. Hatred's currency is negativity, as the saying goes. How to prevent others from becoming negative. Don't be friends with people who bring you down. Spend less time with family members who are always complaining or whining. Leave any groups dominated by pessimistic individuals. Social media can be a dangerous place to make friends with those who spread negativity. How to prevent yourself from becoming negative. Remove all negative self-talk from your life. Accept the fact that being negative is tedious and that few people are interested in it. Listen to your own voice the next time you're online or in person and see what you can learn. Are you being overly pessimistic about the situation? Listening to the other person's point of view is important. Or are you only interested in addressing your own alleged problems, as you put it? Empathy, gratitude and self-awareness should be practiced on a daily basis. Become more self-aware. The key to recognizing and managing hate is self-awareness. An overview of the principles of self-awareness and self-esteem. A good starting point is to take a personality test such as the DSC profile, Myers-Briggs types, or the Yohari window. Wherever possible, try to avoid making assumptions and instead look for evidence. Embrace your failures and learn from them. Become a better sleuth by focusing on the details. Increase your gratitude and creativity. There is a great deal of hate in the world because people are not grateful for what they have. Negativity, the currency of hate, is directly linked to a lack of gratitude. The ability to cultivate gratitude leads to a reduction in anger and a subsequent increase in inventiveness. Becoming more appreciative. Gratitude is a daily practice. Keep an eye out for people who aren't showing gratitude, and you'll be reminded of the importance of it all the time. Take on a difficult gratitude problem, if you must, or DGP. Gratitude can be sparked in the face of adversity. Be more aware of the variety around you and incorporate it into your daily routine or travel plans. Rephrase I must, too. I am allowed. Providing assistance to those in need. If you can't stop complaining, at least take a day off for a week or so. Stay away from the media. Creativity is nurtured by empathy. To combat negativity, empathy is another way to do so. In order to be more creative, you need to become more empathic. Not imagining what it's like to be in someone else's shoes is the secret to empathy. For the simple reason that it places you in their place of suffering. In order for us to understand them, we need to put ourselves in their shoes. There is a saying that goes, when you prescribe simple solutions to people's problems, that is mistakenly putting yourself in their shoes. Developing a higher level of empathy. I actually don't understand anyone unless I make an effort to understand them, admits the author. Don't be impulsive with your responses or your judgments. Don't jump to conclusions about someone's character or motivations just because you've met them once. You'll gain a better understanding of people if you're less quick to judge them. Observe how other people show empathy for you. The more you can recognize it, the better your chances of improving your own abilities. Be on the lookout for those who are genuinely interested in hearing about the experiences and perspectives of others, rather than just talking about their own. In order to build stronger relationships with people you care about, spend more time with them in person. Spending more time with the individual in person helps you remember and understand him or her better. Don't ramble on and on. Engage in more active listening and ask probing questions when conversing. Add to your repertoire. Putting your ideas out into the world is a difficult process, and the more you put your ideas out there, the better you'll understand what others are going through. Consider the difference between empathy and sympathy. Take your time and try to imagine what it would be like to be the person in the other person's shoes. Be mindful of the suffering of others rather than adding to it. Take a moment to think before you speak the next time you're engaged in conversation. If the silence becomes unbearable, try asking a question every now and then. Improve your listening and speaking skills. It's important to learn to read other people's feelings. Having a better grasp of how people communicate their feelings will help you understand others better. Empathy is your business if you're an entrepreneur. The question is whether or not I'm good enough. Because they allow themselves to be convinced by hate that they aren't good enough, many people don't pursue their dreams. In order to keep you from creating, hate will use the tactic of perfectionism. Hate knows that if it can convince you that everything has to be perfect, you won't begin, or at the very least, you won't finish the task you are striving to complete, he says. The first thing to consider if you don't feel good enough is whether you have to be good. Being the best at whatever you do is always beneficial. However, you don't always need to be the best in the world to succeed. 
There are plenty of options if you are honest with yourself and believe that you will never be good at something. There is no one-size-fits-all cure for hate. Instead, you should be working on new ideas all the time. The ability to be creative is not something that can be learned or sustained indefinitely. Make more than you use. Is it any wonder that those who are too busy to search for their own success? HDT, Henry David. Realize that you have two options, either create something or consume something. Doing more than you consume is a necessary condition for being an active creative person. You can't be ignored if you create a lot. Start more often if you keep your creative projects simple. Your creative juices need to be nourished in order to thrive. A change of scenery can inspire you to create, according to the author. A six-hour flight inspired me to write the first 12,000 words of my second book, Content Machine. When we flew to China to have our brewing equipment inspected for my third book, Operation Brewery, I wrote 6,000 words. It was on a flight to the United States that I wrote the last 10,000 words of this book. In deep work, Norris mentions Peter Shankman. Keep a creative toolkit handy so you can jump into action and embrace your creative impulses whenever they show up, no matter where you are or what you're doing. As a result of collaborating and helping others, creativity will thrive. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.